Yo, what's goody with you all today? My name is Reiji VT, and welcome back to another Galaxy Eyes deck profile. Last time, we took a look at what was now possible with the new Galaxy Photon support from Photon Hypernova, but today, I'm gonna be going over the Cypher side of things. Now, unfortunately, Cypher didn't receive any support from the new set, which is unfortunate, but there are still ways to play this version of the deck in a consistent and powerful way. Hopefully, we do get some Cypher support in the future, because that's my next prayer, but for now, let me show you what's possible with this deck. Now what I find is that you can absolutely combine Cypher with the Galaxy Photon strategy to work together with no problem, but I find that you have somewhat more of a consistent deck if you focus on Cypher purely while adding some other really powerful level 8s to boost this deck's power. Now I have to put this disclaimer out there firstly and say that this is nothing meta or even anything super competitive. I'm making this because I want to cover all sides of Galaxy Eyes and I really want to show you what's possible for one of my favorite archetypes. You definitely won't be topping with this or anything like that. If you weren't topping with Galaxy Photon before, you're definitely not about to do the same with the Cypher side of things. When I talked about how inconsistent Galaxy Eyes were before, a lot of that is directed towards the Cypher end of things. If you thought it was bad before, oh boy. I've been spending some time looking through some options, going over some previous deck lists, and seeing what I can do myself for this deck to make it as good as possible. But anyways, that's enough rambling for now, let me get into it and show you guys what we got. So up first is 3 copies of Cypher Twin Raptor, which is your best and may as well be the only starter of the deck. It can special itself out from your hand if you control no monsters and if your opponent controls a monster that was summoned from the extra deck, which in today's format is very more than likely. And especially when you're going second, which this deck is all about. It also lets you special summon out any cypher monster from your hand or deck by discarding a card which is great. Your target for this will usually be the next two cards that I'm gonna go over. So then we play three cypher wings. Wing works as a good extender as it's a free special summon if you control another cypher monster already. It has a great effect that allows you to increase the levels of all cypher monsters you control by 4, which is good for enabling our Xyz plays. It's not very good on its own, but if you open up with 2 or even 1 cypher wing and 1 twin raptor, then that's the ideal situation. Next is 3 copies of Cypher Etranger. Etranger is your best searcher for the deck and is the card that you want to be opening with as much as possible. You can use Raptor's effect to discard this card to search any Cypher spell or trap from your deck and add it to your hand. You can then search cards such as Cypher Interference and Cypher Ascension to climb your Xyz ranks, both cards which I'll go over soon, but I find that this is an absolute essential 3 of. Cypher Mirror Knight is also another good 3 of. This card is like a pseudo monster reborn, but it works a little more slower. When a cypher monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, you can discard this card and add another card from your hand or field in order to special summon back that destroyed monster. When this card ends up in the graveyard that same turn, you can add any cypher card from your deck to your hand, so it also works as a decent searcher. This card isn't the best when you're going first and works better going second again, so I would also add that you can bump this down to 2 if you wanted to fill in the spot with something more. Much better. The reason I have 3 for now is that there are just so few Cypher monsters compared to Galaxy or Photon and they all mention Cypher on them for their additional effects that you kinda have to max out on the number of Cypher monsters that you play. 2 copies of Cypher Biplane. This is one of the more recent Cypher support cards that came from Brothers of Legend and sort of fixes a few issues of the archetype. It helps put more bodies on the field as it allows you to special summon itself whenever you special summon another Cypher monster. On top of that, it increases the levels of 2 Cypher monsters you control to level 8 which helps you exceed summon a lot easier and when it leaves the field, you can banish it to add any Cypher monster from your deck to your hand which is very helpful. I would absolutely bump this up to 3 but I currently only have 2 copies but we can make use of the extra space for something else. If you have the chance though, I would definitely recommend this at 3, it just helps the archetype a lot. And to round off, I play 2 Storm Cyphers. Now don't get it confused, this card is only Cypher by name and isn't actually part of the Cypher archetype itself. It protects you from effects and attacks from monsters in the extra monster zone, but in turn, it also can't do anything against monsters in said zones. Now this is the interesting part of the deck. Because Cypher and Galaxy Eyes as a whole is a rank 8 focused deck, I've gone ahead and placed some level 8 monsters in here that are able to help get the job done a little bit better. Now though I do like to run my decks pretty pure, Cypher is a deck that still needs as much help as it can get which is what I stated earlier. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. You're gonna wanna take as full advantage of the strategy if you wanna get the most out of it. So to start, I play 2 Nebula Dragons. 
This is a great card for both this and the Galaxy deck as it allows you to special summon itself and another level 8 monster for free as long as you have the other level 8 monster in your hand already. When it's in your grave, you can banish it to target a level 4 light or dark dragon monster in your grave and add it to your hand, which is great. I play this at 2 because it works really well with the Galaxy Photon strategy, but it also has some great use in this deck too. Up next is Shores Child Dragon, another level 8 which lets you special summon itself for free if your opponent controls a monster with 2000 attack or more. Great for going second again, as that's what this deck is built for, but it's a brick if you're going first. And then next is Galactic Spiral Dragon, the only other dark attribute that we play in here next to Storm Cypher and Shores Child Dragon, another card that can easily be special summoned if you control two or more light and or dark monsters. It can manipulate all your other monsters into becoming level 8, which is an awesome enabling effect for going into your XC summons. However, it does get banished if it leaves the field during your main phase. Very helpful for the situations that it does come up in. And finally to finish off is Parsec the Interstellar Dragon, a very simple level 8 that normal summons itself out for free if you control a level 8 monster already. I find that it's important to run a package like this because again, this is a rank 8 focused deck. Most Cypher main deck monsters are level 4 but rely on level manipulation which is good but you want to be able to get XC's climbing as fast and early as possible so anything you can do to help yourself out, you have to do. Now I'll go over some other additional monsters and level 8's that you could absolutely make use of to help this deck run nicely, but for now, let me take you through my spells and traps. Up first, I play 3 copies of Cypher Interference. Cypher Interference is amazing in tandem with your Cypher Dragon and helps you push for big OTKs too. So if you control 2 Cypher monsters on the field with the same name, then the attacking monsters attack points get doubled. So because of Cypher Dragon's ability to steal your opponent's monsters and change its name to Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon, you can attack for 6,000 life points or if you have Neo Galaxy Eyes, you can attack for up to 9,000 life points if you can pull it off. Then I played 2 Double Exposures. This is a great card for enabling more Xyz plays by changing your monster's levels. Since we run a lot of level 4s, it's very easy to get them up to level 8 with this card. It also changes the name of one of your monsters to become the same as another monster's which is helpful as it works alongside the Cypher Interference. Cypher Ascension is a card used for easily ranking up your Cypher Dragon into Neo Cypher. Photon Lead is a free special summon of a level 4 or lower light monster which is good and easy for getting extra units on the field and one Twin Twisters because we need some sort of removal in this deck which we don't have so far. And one Monster Reborn. I just want to jump in real quick and give one more option which is Constella Belt which protects your light monster's effects from being negated. And finally, one of each Cypher Trap card. Double Cypher is amazing when you have the advantage of attack points as it allows you to detach all Xyz materials on a Galaxy Eyes or Cypher Xyz monster and special summon another monster from your extra deck with the same name as that Xyz monster. So it's good for being able to get out a second Cypher Dragon or Galaxy Xyz depending on how you run your extra deck. Cypher Bit can be attached to your Galaxy Eyes or Cypher Xyz monster and works as a substitute for whenever your Galaxy or Cypher Xyz monster would be destroyed by battle, you can just detach this card in its place. And Cypher Spectrum allows you to special summon back an Xyz material that was attached to your Cypher Xyz monster and then lets you summon another Cypher Xyz monster with the exact same name as the one that got destroyed. Now at this point, this is only a 33 card main deck because we've covered basically the core of Cypher that we need, which now leaves for plenty of space to run some additional things that can really help you. You can use this opportunity to fill out the extra space with 3 Ash Blossoms and 1 Infinite Impermanence to help you out with your negates and disruptions as this deck doesn't have much of that naturally. Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion is another neat card to consider too. You could also opt to double the number of Cypher traps that you play to 2 of each, but just be careful that you don't jam yourself as though they are helpful cards, they're not super necessary. And you can also play one Nibiru to really help you out as Nibiru is a card that is scary good in the current format and the rest you can fill out with any back row removal that you see fit. You have quite a bit of space to tweak the deck how you want to at this point with the extra space. Now before I jump into the extra deck stuff, let me go over some additional tech for some of the other level 8 cards that you could run to add to the package like I mentioned above. One card that I did mess around with a bit was Swordsman of Revealing Light, a card that can special summon itself when your opponent declares an attack and if this card's defense is higher than that monster's attack, it gets destroyed. Furthermore, if this card is used for an Xyz material for an Xyz summon, that monster gains the benefit of not being able to be destroyed the first time that it would be destroyed. I'm very 50-50 about this card, there's been situations when it does absolutely come up and helps out, 
but other times it can literally just sit there in your hand without doing anything but it is completely optional. Something else you can run is the Blue Eyes engine with two Blue Eyes White Dragons, one or two Melody of Awakening Dragons which will help you out a lot with your other level 8 dragons we already run in here, and one trade-in. The Blue Eyes engine is a great fit for the deck and if you wanted to take it a step further, you could opt in to run one True Light if you're really about it. It's a great method for helping you get your big guys on the field, however, experiment with your level 8 package in this deck as you don't want to run too many bricks. I absolutely love the Cypher side of the Galaxy Eyes archetype, but with Cypher receiving the least amount of love and support, it's important that you help this deck out in whatever way you can. The Galaxy Photon side of things benefits naturally and well from having Cypher cards in the deck, but surprisingly, it doesn't work as well the other way around. You can absolutely run some Galaxy cards in this deck to help you out, but I struggled to find a right balance of having Galaxy support cards while keeping this a predominantly Cypher themed deck. But moving on to the extra deck at last now, and we have to play two of each essential cards, so that's two Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragons, this is your primary key extra deck card right here. This card allows you to target and steal one of your opponent's monsters and change its name to Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon and give it 3000 attack points, essentially giving you two copies of this card on your field, which lets you Xyz summon again on top of that. It's also your starter Xyz for going into some of the other Galaxy Xyz monsters, but it can work well on its own if you just needed to sit there for a bit. Neo Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon is another great card that doesn't see too much play in the regular Galaxy Photon deck, but is amazing when you focus on the Cypher strategy. This card is a great upgrade to the normal Cypher Dragon with an effect that is essentially twice the power. It allows you to detach up to three Xyz materials from it, and for each material you detached, you can take control of one of your opponent's monsters. So you can take control of up to three of your opponent's monsters potentially. These monsters effects are negated, but similar to before, they become copies of this card, meaning that you can have up to four cards with the same name, but you can also use those monsters to rank up if possible or just have them sit there for a while. The downside of both this card and Cypher Dragon is that only this card can attack your opponent directly, which isn't the worst trade-off to have. Moving on from that, I played two Cypher Blades as well. As I mentioned before in my Galaxy Photon video, this is a great card for removing problems on the field and allows you to revive your Cypher Dragon if it happens to be in the grave. And then finally, two Cypher X Dragons to round it off. This was the newest big boss of the deck introduced back in Ghosts from the Past. It can be made using a Cypher Dragon monster and by detaching 2 Xyz material, it protects all of your light monsters from being targeted by card effects until the end of your opponent's turn. Once per turn, you can return a rank 9 or lower Dragon Xyz monster from your grave back to the extra deck and then you can special summon that monster using this card as material, transferring all of this card's material to that card. I think this card is good for the archetype, but it's not great. My biggest gripe with this card is that it requires 2 Xyz material as cost to activate its first first effect, which is a big ask for a not so big return. You also can't rank this up from Cypher Blade because of how that card is worded too, which is not good. It definitely has its uses and it does come up, but I found myself just going into Neo Cypher and the other Galaxy Xyz cards a lot of the time. I still do think it's worth having a 2 for the deck though. And then, one Galaxy Ice Prime Photon Dragon, as it still packs a heavy punch for this deck. One Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon, a great card for any Galaxy build, and one Tachyon Dragon, as well as one Neo Tachyon Dragon. Now, this is a card that I'm still experimenting with quite a bit. Its effect is essentially a more amplified version of Tachyon Dragons, which negates all other face up cards on the field and locks your opponent out of activating any effects on the field. And if it has the original 107 attached, it gains the additional effect of being able to attack three times during each battle phase at the cost of tributing two monsters. And then, one Hope Harbinger, a great spell and trap negation for the deck, one Draglubion to round it out. This card is quite helpful for this deck and is something that I've played around with in the Galaxy Photon side of the deck, but I opt to not run it there just because I'm pretty tight on space already, but I find it's a perfect fit for this version of the deck. And finally, just one copy of Zeus. 
And that's it for the extra deck. Pretty standard stuff here as it's still very much a lot of what you would see in a Galaxy Photon deck but with more focus on Cypher than anything. Remember that you have a lot of free space in the deck to add any extra cards that you feel are essential. In this, I mainly just covered the core and what makes a Cypher style deck if I absolutely had to play it. But again, I love the Cypher side of this archetype and deck and wanted to give you guys some options in case you ever want to try it for yourself. Remember again that this is more a casual build but I don't think I'll be playing this competitively in any capacity but I just wanted to build this version anyway just to showcase how much more variety Galaxy Eyes as an archetype has now especially with all the new support from Photon Hypernova. Thanks again for watching guys and I hope you can give this deck a try at some point because though we don't have a whole lot of Cypher support I believe it still has something to offer. But again thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the duel arena.